94.1 WHRP, today's best variety of R&B, Tony with T-Mill in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And special guest this morning, our very own homie, it is Melody Shari. Hello, Mel. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's happening. <laughs> it is so nice to see you. Um, you know, we're always watching you on television and, of course, uh, listening to all these new jams you're pushing out. What's going on with you, girlfriend? Oh my gosh, you know, I always love it when I get a chance to talk to the Tony Terrell, okay? Um, <laughs> what's going on since we last chatted everything? Um, like you just mentioned, I recently dropped my newest single, Down. So I've been super excited about that. I have my new skincare line that's out. Wow. My book is coming out in May. And of course, Love and Marriage Huntsville, honey, season premiere just happened last Saturday. So what's the um what's this how many seasons have you had this TV show? Season four. This is the wow. fourth season. Mel, do you remember when before the show started, you <laughs> and Martel came and helped me with a Christmas special before we announced the that's really when we announced the show during that Christmas special. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's been that long. It's been oh that God. long. I wore my <laughs> ugly Christmas blouse and everything. <laughs> Get the photos afterwards. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it was, it's been a minute. And um, so the this, this show that is going well as far as ratings and all that stuff? Yes, it is. You know what? It's doing very well. Um, I think that the whole, you know, own and kingdom reign, you know, wanting to make sure that Love and Marriage Huntsville is a reality TV show that truly shows the real. I think it has been able to cause people to connect um, with the show and the people on the show. So ratings have been great and we're still, you know, we've got our, our foot on the gas and we're not letting up anytime soon. There we go. Now, so far, has there been a favorite moment of yours so far when you're looking back? I know there's got to be plenty, but just one that you can pick out that's been just a wild moment or you 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 laugh every time you see it or it makes you cry every time you see it. <laughs> Tears of joy. Hey, I have multiple favorite moments. Ah! Um, give us one because you okay. got to save one for the book, but give us one. <laughs> okay. Anything that involves mostly my children you know, being insane. So like, for example, I actually had the opportunity um, to showcase my, my last child, Milani, who we call Sugar Mama. So she will go down in history as the first baby special on the Oprah Winfrey Network. So that definitely, that whole process, you know, they filmed the hospital scene and everything. So that definitely is a fave moment of mine. That's sweet. Wow. I remember a moment with the kids. You were at, at a pumpkin patch or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a sweet moment. And but then it got weird with that lady. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> it got weird with that lady. I don't know. She was doing some voodoo or something. I don't know what was going on. Well, well I met her because of the play Black Mother's Monologue. And I met her on the show at the coffee shop, as you guys saw um, that season. And from there, you know, honestly, she would text me positive things here and there. And, um, you know, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Well, I've been around <laughs> longer than most of you. I'm closer to the stars. If you need some astronomical, whatever, I got you. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> nice. Now, checking out the credits of your, your, your new song, I see you producing uh, music and you've been producing television. Which one do you like producing more, television or music? Music. Mm. I like music more because it allows me to let out certain emotions, certain feelings um, freely. You know what I mean? Without judgment. And so, you know, sometimes when you say things, it can get taken out of context, taken the wrong way. People are quick to say, well, you shouldn't have said that. Honey, I go put it in a song and it is what it is. Like it, love it, don't like it, it don't matter. <laughs> it's going to resonate with someone. Everyone's going through a lot of similar issues and problems. We're human, so there's no That's new problems. There's no new issues, you know. That's so, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So pen to paper, how long have you been writing songs? So I really just started writing the past two years, two, three years. And um, I, you know, for me, it's been easy so far just because I'm doing what I do, which is keeping it real. 
and, you know, being truthful and being transparent. So being able to put what I'm feeling on paper comes easy for me. Okay. Absolutely. They say you only get writer's block when you're telling a lie. So as long as you're telling the truth, Ooh, you're going to have a whole album. Mr. Philosopher. Damn, I, you, like, <laughs> I like that. I'm trying to get a feature on the album. I Is there an album hey. coming out? Huh? <laughs> Is there an album coming out? So you know what? What's so cool about my music career is that I'm literally moving in the way that I said I would move a year ago. So I dropped my first single right out a year ago. And when I started doing interviews about that song, Telltale Signs, you know, people were asking, is there an album coming? And I said, I'm going to drop about three singles with the video to go along with them. And then I will drop an EP mm -hmm. album. So um, I'm really following the path that I mentioned a year ago. So that uh, first song, a lot of people want to know, whose dog was that in the video? <laughs> <laughs> so I actually, <laughs> that was my favorite part, too, by Me the way. Too. <laughs> that was my favorite part. I don't think people were. It was so boss, you know. And all that. Huh? It was real boss. I love that I scene, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <sighs> I actually used a company. Um, I they they train dogs, and I actually hired that company to have some of their dogs present. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I said she coming out gangster. Now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> instant, instant. <laughs> hey, I had on the dark hair. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> Nino Brown vibes. I was like, all right, here we go. Now yeah. the Orion Amphitheater. You know the amphitheater is opening up soon, and you mm -hmm. are hosting the opening weekend. Tell us about that. Like, how excited are you about that? Man, I'm so excited. I think overall for me, I'll tell people any day, being born and raised here in Alabama, having a love for the arts and for entertainment. It's like, even though Alabama hasn't been a, a huge state when it comes to that, at this point, let's be clear, we literally have a reality TV show that's on a national network, right? Then we've got the, the Orion Amphitheater coming that is opening more doors for performances, you know, and just for the arts and entertainment. So for me to be a part of the first event that's happening, I'm thankful. I feel thankful. I'm, I feel blessed that they even asked me to host, you know? Are you going to sing on that day? Well, you know, with my hosting, honey, I may just pop out with it and hit a note on the mic. You, you know just, what I'm saying? Home. Now, that would be great because you're uh, hosting and co uh, Dante Prize is the co-host. So that'll be a great collaboration seeing you guys up there. Nice. Absolutely. You might need some background dancing. Know. If you need some background <laughs> dancers, I'm just saying, I still can bust a move. There, I can still bust a move now. <laughs> All right. I love it. <laughs> Talking to Melody Shari, of course, the star of Love and Marriage Huntsville, dropping those gems on us this morning, plus all the great music. And uh, the last song you sung, it was about somebody. It seemed like you were talking about somebody. Mm. Which one, Down or which one? Not the new one. The one that was talking about this girl that was not a star or what was what were they saying in that song? Mm, oh, talking side about the side chick of the year oh, award. Oh, no, I didn't want to say it out loud, <laughs> but since you brought it up. <laughs> I mean, the I, Emmys are coming up. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Let me tell you, that song, that song was written for all the wives out there or the long term, long term girlfriends who have in whatever way their relationship has been affected by someone who didn't mind playing the side role. I did that for all of us. Okay. All right. Yep. That's that anthem. All right. What does the trophy look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a half. It's Ma. half because it's, you know, it's just a half a trophy. <laughs> little, right? Oh, my goodness. So, you know, when you started the project with Love and Marriage Huntsville there, <laughs> was the objective of, you know, rebuilding uh, in North Alabama and you bought, um, bought and build uh, two homes, right? You build two homes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so where are we with this whole project of rebuilding? You know what? I will be honest. I think at this point, everyone is kind of doing their own thing as it pertains to giving back to giving back to the community. You know, unfortunately, yes, it has strayed away <laughs> from that original concept and idea 
I can, you know, speaking for myself, I know there's still a lot that I do on a regular in terms of giving back and donating, donating my time, donating my resources, um, and still trying to make sure that we as a people that we're winning and getting put in positions to win. Um, that's what I'm doing. I can't say what everybody else has going on. I'm sure they have some things going on, but I'm still making sure to do my part solo when it comes to, you know, giving back. And you um, had the um, the mimosas with Melody, an empowerment, um, you know, brunch with ladies and also your master class. Are you still doing those? I am. I am. So I had a mimosas with Melody. I do it every year uh, between spring and summer. And it's a wonderful event, Tony, where women come together. Um, we're able to give business advice, relationship advice, life advice. And just really open up and be authentic and transparent um, and get to the heart of the matter, so to speak. So I do that every year. Um, I have my master class with Melody. I've had to date. I started in my first class was June of 2020. And to date, I've had over 400 students go through my course, mostly African-American females. It's a five week course. And I teach them how to get into this industry called property preservation, which is a multi-billion dollar industry that has been white male dominated forever. And so um, I have students from Cali to New York to Florida. It's a national industry. So being able to connect and pour into um, people that way as well, you know, it's fulfilling for me. Nice, nice. Now, Melody, uh, who inspires you? You know, a lot of times uh, the young ladies that are coming up, when they see the things that you're doing, the entrepreneurial spirit and the road that you're taking, products, masterclasses, performing, writing, producing, and they go, hey, I can do it too because I look just like her. Or we've got some of the same things in common. Who was that for you that let you know, like, hey, you looked up to and you wanted to do those things and inspired you? Who inspired you? Um, so for sure, Oprah Winfrey. You know, um, Oprah, for sure, you know, I look at her um, as an amazing role model, um, as a woman who, even though she went through a lot, you know, growing up in her early stages of life, she's still, she's tenacious, she's resilient, she's an overcomer. And, you know, following in those footsteps, I think that is what people, why they, you know, like me and why they feel connected to me because they've seen me go through things, right? And have seen how I was able to overcome that. So Oprah Winfrey, honey, is the truth, period. Oh, Always. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Can Winfrey. we talk a little bit about the uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville um, show? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I've seen the different relationships um, evolve and kind of dissolve uh, over the last couple of seasons. Um, recently in the last uh, or season opener, I see the scene where this Letitia and Destiny are chopping it up, talking about you, saying that Letitia is an enemy and Destiny saying I'm not friends with Mel like I used to be. What's going on? Your friends are dropping left and right. <laughs> They ain't dropping. They being dropped. Oh, mm. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't want um. no more sugar in my coffee. <laughs> Put a little bit of Jack in that. <laughs> We're not just sipping the tea. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so they're being dropped. OK, so let me say this. I have Tony. I have spent the most time by myself than I have my whole life this past year. And in that time, God has really been able to sit me aside, show me some things. My intuition has gotten on point higher than it ever has been before. And where I am in my life, if it's not something or someone that is bringing me peace, bringing me positivity, um, not increasing stress, but reducing stress, if it ain't that, got to go. I just don't even have space or the capacity, honestly, or the tolerance even. Um, to deal with anything that's opposite of positive energy, positive vibes, honesty, loyalty. If it ain't that, I can't deal with it. So what you guys saw in that conversation, you know, and you'll see it as the season. So make sure you continue watching the yeah. show. You see me discuss some of the things that caused me to start to pull back um, at the reunion. You know, I was thrown <laughs> by a lot of different comments made and um, one being, you know, on the stage, 
Even though I spent time the last season genuinely trying to move forward with Letitia, I sponsored their Destiny Rays. You know, after my video premiere party, which I invited her to, um, I took my whole team to their cigar lounge, you know, just supporting. We could have gone anywhere. I could have booked a whole room at Cotton Row if I wanted to, right? But I was like, no, we're going to go to Black, you know? So I'm supporting genuinely, you know? Um... And so then on the stage, it became a, well, I just don't think Mel is a good friend. Wait, what? Whoa. Mm. Whoa. Why that, why that bang? Wait a minute, what? Um, so that kind of threw me. And then even, honestly, Destiny, you know, making the comment that she didn't know where our friendship stood. That even threw me because it had literally only been six weeks since we'd hung out. So in a six week time frame, you go from we're great friends to I don't know where our friendship stands. Um, and, you know, even making the comment that she hadn't heard from me, which I had been texting her. Now, I hadn't been talking to her as much because I did need a mental break after filming, but I was still checking on her. I invited her to brunch during that six week time frame. So, again, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um so I just got, you know, for me, that on top of some other things, I was just like, mm -mm, I'm good. I'm going to be over here in my own lane, doing my thing, minding my business, handling my business, my children. And that's just where I am. So, you know, T-Bill, you probably don't know this, but they're not invited to the uh, pajama party. And she bought oh. everybody pajamas. <laughs> they didn't even get a pair. No, I'm telling can't you. Can't come to the jammy you know, jam. Can't come to the jammy jam. But you know what? Again, that shows how I roll. If I'm cool yeah. with you, I'm cool with you. And if I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going to invite you to nothing if I ain't cool with you. Wow. And if I, I'm going to invite you to everything. <laughs> mm. Mm. Ooh, I can't breathe. <laughs> so another question is, I saw a tease about uh, these. It looked as if these ladies are like getting ready to fight in this new, oh, the teaser, this yeah. new season of the show. And I'm like. That is one thing I was always proud about this show. It may have kind of gotten a little janky on some things, but one thing it didn't do was that. That was all the oh. other reality shows. Oh. We don't do that in Huntsville. What's oh. going on? No, actually, we never had that um, happen before on this show. Who are those people? Yeah, well, um, so let me tell you. <laughs> um, and how they get in Huntsville? <laughs> oh my Who gave them? What had happened? You know, oh when did they God. get a membership card? <laughs> <laughs> I was I, cannot, I was very, very hurt and disappointed. Right, that that is where things went to. I will say that. Um, I think the first mid, I think, you know, last season, someone was threatened to be drugged between several states, you know, um, mm. what I will say is that for the first time in that moment, I understood Tony, hear me clear for the first time in that moment, I understood how things on these other reality shows get so heated that people start fighting. Oh, for First time they take, out of they take four, se four seasons and you couldn't have told me that. But for the first time in that moment, I understood this is how people start fighting on reality TV shows. Oh, wow. um, okay. You know, because when cameras are present, sometimes people use that as an opportunity to be super disrespectful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, thinking that ain't nobody going to say nothing back to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's being televised and filmed. But everyone has a breaking point. Everyone has triggers. Um, and it was just one of the, unfortunately, one of those moments where people weren't here for it. So are in this scene, are you swinging? No, honey, I didn't have to swing nothing in the scene. You ain't going to see me swing nothing. You ain't going to see me throw nothing, Tony. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, all my I, mom. I thought I was getting ready to have to pull them off and come on out there and take it to the uh -huh. Take it to uh -huh. the bank. I called my mama and apologized to her right after this, uh, we filmed it. I called her, went ahead and apologized because, you know, I've been working so hard to be calm and be at peace. And so I said, mom, I had one. I'm going to let you know I had one time now where I done acted up, but it was just one time. But I didn't have to swing or anything, but I did have to 
make it clear because people will see you on your journey of going after peace and not being um, interactive in all of the drama on social media and all of that. And they will take that as you're being weak or you are weak. Mm. And um, so for me in that moment, in all last season, seeing me trying to be at peace with people and wanting everybody to get along, in that moment, I was tested and I was trying. So my stand up was on some like, but don't get it twisted. <laughs> you know what I'm right, saying? Like, right. Let's be clear, though. You you're a real country girl, up. right? You're a real country girl. You will get a little muddy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, but that's the part. To be honest, that's the part, Tony. I think um, that's one of the reasons I work so hard to keep my peace level where it needs to be because when my temperament goes there, it's hard to have a cap on that. And that's what I'm afraid of. Yeah, And so I prefer, like you will see, I, I actually end up leaving that scene. But what I'm afraid of and what I would prefer is to not even have to go there because when I get heated, it's kind of hard to bring me back down. And so mm. I've worked too hard. I've worked too hard. You know, I went through yeah. years of arguing with somebody. Y'all don't see me arguing on this show so much. I don't went through years of arguing, fussing, debating, da 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 I'm over that. And I prefer to just be calm and at peace. Talking to Melody Shari, and of course, we're talking about love and marriage Huntsville, and I'm so glad to hear that you're moving in a different direction, because it hurt my feelings watching you and Martell argue, mm -hmm. and it, I'm going to tell you, it really kind of took me back to my childhood uh, as a child dealing with a mother and father who was going at it like that, mm. and yeah. it brought out some emotions, and you know, it was hurtful to see that, especially on television, because yeah. those things just don't ever go away, you know? Mm -hmm. That's so right. I'm glad that you're you're in your mind and your feelings and thinking that, you know what, I'm done with that. I'm going somewhere yeah. else. I got other things to do. Tell us about the song Done. Down. Oh, done, down. <laughs> well, I, you know. <laughs> that's the remake. That's the next one coming. That's, that's what I That's going to be on the album, on the EP. I'll be here and done all the time. <laughs> Look, the said, since she done, we're going to call the song <laughs> Done. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> so down, let me tell you, down was an amazing song to record. That's my first song that I actually recorded in one setting. I went in, did mm. the lead, did the backgrounds, the tops and the bottoms all in one session. Usually I do my leads one day, come back the next day, do the backgrounds. Um, it's also the first song that I actually cried in the studio. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah. And I think that's what people are feeling why they're so, why they are so, it's resonating with them so much because they feel the emotion behind it. Um, but yes, the first song that I actually cried in the studio too. You got a release from it. That's wonderful. Yeah. The yeah. song Fire, I like it. Thank it's you. good therapy, you know? Yeah, because you, and what I like about it also, T Mail, is that she gets to the point, sings the song. And I think that's why I said it's down done mm. because in, in two and <laughs> you're trying to clean it up. No, no, no. In two and a half minutes, the song is done. And that's all you need. Sometimes people drag these songs out and I'm like, you know what? We were done with that a few minutes ago. Now, but how anyway. hard was it to shoot that cover? Uh, the cover of the, the, the album cover. How hard was that to shoot oh. that? That was interesting. Oh, Brian. Oh, swimming pool. What are we doing on that? Listen, Brian, whom I've known since he was like 15, um, he actually did the cover shot. Brian Cole, he did the cover shot for me. This is what happened. I went in the studio on a Sunday, recorded the song. I drove to Huntsville Tuesday, got up, drove to Huntsville, went to grab the gown, went to his studio. We planned this while I was driving to Huntsville because I needed to upload everything Wednesday for it to drop Saturday. Um, he went and bought the wood pieces, tarp, put water in there, but he told me the water was warm. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so when I started stepping my little butt in the water, Ooh. it was cold. Mm. And um, I had to pull up my big girl undies, you know what I'm saying, and go and take it like a champ, you know, right. <laughs> get the shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got on in the water, shaking, shivering, laid in there, wet my hair up really well. And after a while, of course, my body started to adjust and we were able to get that beautiful shot. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Sacrifice, man. <laughs>
Well, I tell you what, I've enjoyed catching up with you. Um, I know I can't let you go without asking, how is your brother doing? Because, honey, he was on fire. I love my brother so, 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 so much. Um, He's just a wonderful you know, I was able to spend time with him last week in Atlanta and um, he's doing amazing. He's got his real estate company going. He just started a trucking company as well. Um, but he is doing phenomenal. Still looking fine as ever. Let me tell All you, right. I met the where you walk, he walked through the house. I'd be like, oh, my brother. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps himself in really nice shape. <laughs> yeah, he does. Like. He and Troy work out every morning at 4 a.m., girl. They oh. get up at every morning. They need to call me. <laughs> Get me motivated. I want to look like them. <laughs> oh, he told man. me last time I was there, he was like, I'm going to come wake you up. I said, mm, I ain't bring no tennis shoes. Don't come bother me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been fun uh, catching up with you. And thank you for sharing and being so transparent. And uh, you know, getting us up to speed. Uh, we love you a lot and uh, wishing you nothing but continued success. And of course, uh, stay healthy and uh, hug the kiddos for us. You know, one day um, you bring them over here to the station. You know, we'll have some fun. I love that. Yeah, when yeah. they do a spring break or summer break. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mama doing good. We're going to be catching up with her soon. She's been really he active. Is. She released her book, um, you know, Grandmother's House, a trip to grandmother's, grandma mother's house. And so that's doing well. She has her real estate company as well. And so she's doing amazing. Everybody's God. making it happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for you and I. We're just a slouch. I mean, we gotta get it together. <laughs> we gotta get outside. <laughs> all over there killing it. <laughs> Have a wonderful uh season with the show. Stay hey. healthy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See you soon. Love you guys. Love you back. Okay, bye-bye. Peace.